Support contracts are the polar opposite, but a lot of people, especially if you have employees that are sitting on the bench not doing anything, uh, or, or have a lot of downtime not fully uh, utilized, support contracts can be an interesting follow-on if you are doing a build. So if let's say you're doing the whole stack, you're the architect, you're the home builder, and you're the, the maintenance guy and the janitor who's cleaning up things, or the landscaper who just keeps the place looking nice. If you do all three of those things, you might wanna rethink that, but if you do, then you could add a support contract onto the end after the build and create a line of business there. It's, it's, it's always low profit, but you can, if you can do a lot of volume and you have a lot of uh, employees that are not expensive, then it could be an approach. And then I put training and workshops on here too because technically they are productized services. You sell them at a price, they're fixed scope, um, but they usually represent a business model change. So if, if you did want to start doing training and workshops, you'd really strategic, want to think about it strategically. Is like, is this really the direction we want to go? Because on the one hand, it could uh, increase your perception of your expertise in the marketplace, but on the other hand, it's not what you actually do and it's a different audience usually. So you'd be selling to peers instead of selling to buyers. So your, your buyers become different. So you, you want to think about training and workshops, but it can be a good, uh, it can be good. All right, pros and cons. Uh, these are very easy to create. You can uh, set up a sales page in an hour. It's really easy. Um, they're easy to price because you don't have to talk to anybody. You just be like, eh, what's my walkaway price on this? Uh, 5,000, 50,000, whatever it is. My walkaway price for this is whatever, whatever it is for you. And you just like double it. Every time, or if you wanna really test the market, you could keep it at break even. And every time you sell one, increase it by 65%. So like every time you sell one, raise the price, raise the price, raise the price until the demand starts to fall off and you're getting a really nice profit. And the last thing is they're easy to sell, at least compared to projects. Because people that contact you about this road mapping service that you offer, they're, they're already sold, basically. They're pretty serious. Uh, there's nothing to really talk about. They might have a couple of questions. You update your FAQ, you say, oh, that's a good question. They might say, should we buy this or go straight to a project? Uh, but the, the conversations are really easy. A lot of times you don't even have to jump on the phone. It's just back and forth over email and they run the credit card, send the check or whatever. The cons are, it's still a service. So you do have to deliver it. It's, it's high touch in the delivery. There's still um, a potential of scope creep, although it's a lot lower because the, what the thing they bought is clearly outlined. It's less likely to have scope creep. The big one is, for me, the big one is that you can leave money on the table. So if you have some road mapping service or some strategic engagement that takes maybe five to 10 hours across the course of two to four weeks, and it's got this deliverable at the end and you deliver some report, if you're doing that normally for like mom and pop pizza places or regional chains, that you know $5,000, let's say, might be a reasonable price for them, but then if Domino's comes along and they're like, yeah, we want that $5,000 road map thing, you probably could have gotten 10 times that from them. So there is that risk of, of uh, potential to leave money on the table, but that's the trade-off. If, if you are terrible at sales and you don't wanna get better, you're terrible at the why conversation and you don't really wanna get better, productized services are a nice trade-off because you can just, you don't, you can just uh, decrease the need for you being a really good salesperson. This last one is a myth, but I put it up here because everyone thinks it. They're like, I'm creative. I can't do the same thing over and over. But like I said, the thing that's the same over and over is the marketing and the sales, the piece that you probably don't even like. The delivery is still a service and you're gonna, you're gonna have your process, you're gonna be following the process and uh, there's always gonna be some, something you learn about the client, you're still gonna be dealing with them. So there's still creativity that you bring to it. And especially in the case of a roadmap, it's highly likely to lead to the implementation work if you do want that.